Okay, we're going uh, right from all the settings to so the last one we had. We're moving right to the next setting along and we'll keep doing that. So uh, uh, I think this is uh, probably warm glowing nightscape, I believe. If the, if the last one was uh, clear uh, uh, night sky or something. Or clear nightscape, I think it's cool. So... Uh, yeah, general rough uh, look at look see recce sort of thing. Because we did have some sort of auriculadas, sort of you know the standard auriculadas, I believe, grow up there. Not the the special ones we discovered. Well, I think we discovered them last year, wasn't it? Yeah, first we noted, and then we went back, and uh, yeah, black. Well, they're so dark red that you, it's better to just call them black stem lorix or anything. But whether they'll be true from seed, I don't know. As I said, uh, this area is synonymous for, or renowned for, the Brian Dentoni eyes, which we'll go and have a look over there. You know, from late August, you know, from the end of the wet into the dry sort of thing, when we get the coldest nights and the, the sunlight starts brightening up again. You know, the, sting, the stingage starts coming back. I mean, we've still got the stingage in the air. Um, yeah, they get so dark red, they're almost black as well. So there seems to be a common trend there between dark reds that are almost black. And why don't we do a colour check? And wow, I think we've actually come out to this road here. So, oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, I, am I not going in there close enough for you fellas? I'm trying to learn these things. And, are they evenly spaced? That's another question. And we can come back here and see if they do actually plump up. You know, find the same plants. Well, the leaves won't probably be there, but... Well, there you go. That ought to please somebody. A look at some of these plants. But probably, you know, my luck, I'm on the wrong setting, which is hopefully why I keep changing the settings now oh i'm too dark or something like that but the sun is out okay oh i don't want to be seen do i not i thought it was the well it is a road over there so yeah people can get a bit finicky a bit picky you know oh i think the bloke spoke to me, spoke to me last year and said oh, it's, we know it's you <laughs> mr sunju man so i think well i'm not probably the sunju man if you got uh, of the internet <laughs> uh, I said I, I try to be modest until I grow a fly trap with four inches, four inch traps. Then I'll uh, jettison the modesty. Put it that way, and I'll be true to my word. You can hold me, hold me to it as well. I'll be modest until I grow a Venus fly trap with four inch traps after putting. <laughs> The ecology on firm scientific foundations and showing you you know why what you got wrong basically as i said uh, recently in a clip they got i don't know what it is i can transfer it from the car to my computer i can transfer it from the it runs on my computer i can transfer it to the usb i can take the usb out to the lounge watch it in the lounge i don't know why i can actually film it into the camera from the screen you know directly from the uh the blu-ray player to my camera and film it that way i don't know get it back that way but apparently youtube thinks it's um corrupted i'm saying well it's so how corrupted is it so it's not corrupted enough to, to, to play on my, my computer not corrupted enough to be transferred to my usb not corrupted for it to be viewed by my blu-ray player in my lounge room on tv so you know <laughs> this idea that the file is corrupted, is, <laughs> uh, you know, and then YouTube just keeps thinking it's an audio file. That's why it keeps coming up. Oh, you, you're trying to upload an audio file here. So something's gone wrong. But anyway, I think I think it's a bit like those Taz Word software things. I think I'm just going to have to fire those into the ether, fire the YouTube, and some nerd on the other side of the world is going to get his jollies, and good on him or her. Um, you know, uh, 
getting the old Tazword software out and generating the old, you know, the, the mock-ups to the fen and comparing the, uh, the blurbage. As I said, as far as I can remember, the only difference between the original 1980s fen article and the 1995 amended one that, um, uh, the like, um, um, Dennis Daly asked me to prepare and he wanted me to add some more extra information because I'd done some more work from the late 80s into the 90s on the, uh, you know, the, I'd seen the pads and um, the uh, thing. But my, as I said, my, my emphasis was on the, the ribbon tentacle because that was the real thing. Because, I, as I said before, I came into them from not having... Uh, I was over in WA and we didn't have sl um, slacks number one. Um, yeah, slack one. Because it didn't come out until I crossed over the border. So there's no, no physical way I could actually have slack one. And so I didn't see that... Um, uh, but uh, but many I photograph in there. So my experience of you know, rib, so-called ribbon tentacles was from glandular onwards and outwards. So they not like most hobbyists see ribbon tentacles basically for the first time really uh, before all those South Americans and South African uh, things started coming out. Uh, it was basically on, but many I was the real one that really was the eye-opening one that had something that was a little bit different, a little bit a little bit special, a little bit different sort of thing. Uh, Sort of thing. So I was approaching the problem. So that's I focused in on the ribbon tentacle sort of thing, not the the pads, which I did see. But my my understanding of the pads, especially with glandular lizards, they start off wet and they go dry sort of thing. So you know they go you know like um, they start off wet and become like one of those sweets, one of those jelly, um, 